Hey everyone, let's get this camera adjust. I think the sun just came out, so now my lighting's all crazy. Maybe? Mm. It's going to be, it is what it is, right? This is home, home brewed video. So, uh, we are, today we're going to work on getting started with embroidery. And, um, so we went over the supplies you need last time, so we're going to get, get getting started, getting um, your first stitches in, and then the back stitch. And this is cutting off to square mode, so I'm going to have to zoom out. And my husband downstairs, he'll help me in a little bit, too. So yesterday we talked about the supplies. You got your pattern ready. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. You got your pattern ready. Your... Um, pattern your cloth in the frame. If you wanted the interfacing on the back, that's your choice. Um, snips, floss, of course your needle. I have a little needle minder and a needle threader if you need one. And I, Yesterday I forgot to mention this, but a thimble. This is my thimble that I actually use on my middle finger because um, I like to push through the end of the needle. But this one is, it says Leet on it. That's my um, my grandmother's sister-in-law. <laughs> I got all of her sewing supplies when she passed. So you're going to ask me where you can get this one, and I'm, I'm not going to have an answer for you. There are some on the market now that are similar to this, but this one is just broken in and well-loved. All right. Let's get started, guys. The number one thing, your thread, your floss. Floss is six strands all woven together. So go ahead and cut off 12 to 18 inches is kind of the rule. People say from your fingertips to your elbow. If you get much longer than that, it gets snarled and twisted up together. And shorter than that, you're just always starting, you know, starting to get new floss together. Um, what I like to do when I first take it off it, you know, I store mine on these little cards so it has little kinks in it to just kind of untwist it a little bit. I just like to condition it with my fingernail just to try to get some of those bumps out and get the threads twist, untwisted. Most of this pattern you're going to use three strands unless on this page it'll say, and I think everything's backwards for you guys, I'm sorry, it says six strands. Um, on a couple of them, just the the little X star thing and the bumblebee. I think are the only two where we switch to six strands or two, but otherwise the rule of thumb is three strands. So how I like to separate them is to, oops, caught in the table here. Um, like to pull up to the top and then you you kind of, um, mm, focusing, um, simply divide them in half, three to three kind of, they should ungroup pretty easily. And then what I do is hold them in between my pointer finger and my other fingers and simply, slowly pull down, letting the bottom untwist as I go. And the key here is to go slow. Um, if you go too fast, you're going to get them snarled up. And the, let the one swing out and then let the other one because they're going to still untwist. Just set one of those aside. And we've got this one. Now, the correct way to start embroidery is with an away knot, and that is exactly what it sounds like to stitch away from you. I get before we do that, I suppose we need to put a uh, needle on this this thread. Um, one of the tips and tricks I learned a long time ago, instead of threading your needle, which is bringing the thread to your needle, bring your needle to your thread needling your thread. So how I like to do this, I'm getting the zoom in case you're getting a close-up of my nails here today. I like to snip off the ends, so a nice clean cut. And I like to stick it way down, sorry, that's focusing, not focusing, way down into my finger. And then I take the eye of the needle and slip over that knot. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. So in my hands, I brought the needle down over the thread and pulled it through. Okay, the crack on the table is right where my thread is. So that's an option. Some people still just don't, they don't enjoy that part of the process. 
Another way to do this is to take, this is a needle threader, this is the clover one. Here's the package. I just discovered these the other day. So I did get some in the shop. They're not up on our website yet, but I'll add them. But, so you take your needle and stick the, the threader through it. Okay, so your needle's on there. And then we're going to take our thread and stick it through the big eye of the needle threader. All three strands of it going through there. Oh, I wish I could focus better for you guys. I'm sorry. And then pull that on. So now your needle's on there. So that is a great way to, to thread it as well. Okay, let's get stitching. And today we're just going to get started and get the back stitch going. I'm going to call up my husband because he's going to help me with this part because <laughs> you can, this is a home row video, guys. Um, hey, Stuart. There's two ways to start stitching. And one is an away stitch, and that's the proper way to do it. You want to, here he is. Can you, you're going to have to switch here. Uh -huh. Sorry guys, just give us one second. Oh, there you're gonna see our... Okay, all right, so in a waist stitch, we're gonna stitch this star right here. I think that'll be the easiest to start with. What you do in a, for an away stitch is you just go way over here to the end of your fabric and come back through. Coming back up where you wanna start your design. And in the end, what we'll do is snip that off and re-thread that and weave it back into the back of our design. That's the right way to do it. Now, I honestly just tie a knot. If no one's going to see the back of my project, I don't care. The only time a knot will get in your way is like if you're doing a French knot and coming right back down on the same spot, you just have to make sure that your knot on the back is out of the way. All right, so I'm going to start with a back stitch. A rule with embroidery is if you can keep your needle on top of your work, you will be much more efficient in the long run. So starting this star, and I like to loosen my fabric up a little bit so I can um, move it in my, with my fingers underneath. We, um, for the back stitch, you start down, come back up. And then we're gonna go back to that first spot. And again, come back up the second one. And a lot of times people ask me, how do you get your stitch lengths the same length? Um, my answer to that one is practice. And number two is I don't. Um, a lot of times, like this word love that you'll be doing, when you are going around these curves, not all the stitches will be the same. They might have to change a little bit in order to, to float around the curve. And when you're doing that, you'll use much smaller stitches as when you're doing the star. You can see I did a little bit bigger stitches. And even the next one over here, I, there's, those stitches are even bigger yet. All right, so that's simply the back stitch. Just keep going and try to poke it exactly in the same, um, same spot that your last one came out of so you don't have any threads in between there to manipulate. And again, you guys, if you didn't see the link, there is all of um, close-up videos are on YouTube of each of the stitches that we'll be doing today. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I encourage you to keep on top. Here's your homework for the back stitch. I want you to do the love. You can do the thread on the spool of thread. That's just one big stitch that loops around. Make sure you're not zigzagging. You want to loop around the star. The dark and the light green of this, uh, what is that called? What's that called? No. Huh. Plaid. Plaid. Tartan. Tartan. I like that word. Um, and then the airplane. And nothing on that row. Let's wait for the bee. Because the bee's got some very delicate little stitches in it. Uh, the arrow, you can do the, mm, I'm sure there's a name of that part of the arrow. Shaft. And the shaft. And the, thanks, hon. Mm -hmm. And um, what's that part of the arrow? 
fins. The fins, the shaft and the fins. Uh, those are just single stitches that loop through. The hexi is a great way to practice stitches. So this center hexi is one stitch to each corner. The next one is two stitches. This next one is three stitches. And then the last one is four. So that's your homework. This outside all this charcoal dark gray line, I want you to wait till last because I want that um, those stitches to be on top of your other ones. For example, over here, I want it to be over that purple or eggplant color. So there you go. That's your homework until our next um, lesson, which is scheduled for Wednesday. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow you can come to Stitch Supply and stitch with me in person. Otherwise, Facebook Live I'll do again on Friday at 1 o'clock. And then we'll work on, on Friday we'll work on couching, chain stitch, and lazy daisy. Thanks, guys. See you later.